hello viewers welcome to my channel today's topic is traction and before starting this topic i would like to request you to like subscribe and share these videos to support this channel you know first of all we need to know what is traction you know and then the types and uh, more you know you know in medical field uh, the traction refers to the practice of uh, slowly and gently and gradually pulling on a fractured or the dislocated body part you know. and it's uh, often done using ropes uh, pulleys or the weights and uh, these tools uh, uh, help to apply the force to the tissues surrounding the damaged area you know and the purpose of the traction is to uh, guide the body part back into its place and hold it steadily there you know and tractions may be used to number one to stabilize and uh, realign the bone fractures like uh, broken arm or broken leg you know and it can be used to help to reduce the pain of the fracture before surgery or uh, to treat the bone deformities which are caused by the certain conditions such as uh, uh, scoliosis you know and the like correct stiff and uh, constricted muscles joints tendons or the skin and uh, to stretch the neck and uh, prevent painful muscle spasms you know. so these are the purposes you know uh, situations where the traction is used you know no, there are two main types of the traction and uh, they are the self traction and the skin traction and uh, the type of traction used will depend on the location and the nature of the problem now no, I will come to the uh, skeletal traction first you know you know the skeletal, uh, skeletal traction uh, involves placing a pin wire or the screw in the fractured bone and uh, after one of these devices uh, once they has been inserted the weights are uh, attached to its uh, to it so that the bone can uh, like it can be pulled into the correct position you know and this type of surgery uh, may be done using a general spinal or the local anesthetic to keep you from feeling pain during the procedure you know and the amount of time needed to perform the skeletal traction will depend on whether it's a, a like a preparation for more like definitive procedure or uh, the only surgery that will be done to allow the bone to heal you know and uh, it's most commonly used to, uh, to treat the fractures caused of the femur you know or uh, uh, thigh bones you know and you know it's also uh, the preferred method when greater force needs to be applied to the affected area you know and the force is directly applied to the bone you know and which means that more weight can be added with less risk of uh, like uh, uh, damaging the surrounding soft tissues you know the next thing is skin traction you know you know the skin traction is uh, far less invasive if compared to the skeletal, uh, the previous one that was a uh, skeletal uh, traction, you know. And uh, it involves applying splints, bandages, and adhesive tapes to that uh, to the skin, you know, directly below the fracture, you know. And uh, once the material has been applied, the weights are fastened to it, you know. And the affected body part is then pulled into the right position using a pulley system attached to the hospital bed, you know. Now, the skin traction is used when the soft tissues such as muscles and the tendons need to be repaired, you know. And uh, less force is, uh, is applied during the skin traction to avoid the ir irritation or the damaging to the skin and uh, other soft tissues, you know. And the skin uh, traction is rarely the only treatment needed. Instead, it's usually used as the temporary 
a kind of way to stabilize the broken bone until the definitive surgery is performed you know now the third one another type is cervical uh, traction now in case of cervical traction you know a metal brace is placed around your neck and the brace is then attached to uh, like a body a harness or the weights you know and which are used to help to correct the affected area and the cervical traction is performed uh, using general anesthetic so you will be sleep throughout the entire procedure you know. and uh, this might be used in two different situations number one uh, it may be done to gently stretch the neck muscles so the muscle spasm can be relieved or prevented and it may also be performed to immobilize the spine after the neck injury you know. now the next thing is uh, what will happen after this procedure well if you are treated with the traction you will probably need to participate in an uh, inpatient or an outpatient treatment program you know and these programs often consist of physical and occupational therapy to help you regain your strength and uh, like uh, relearn the skills that uh, uh, may have been affected by your injury you know and a therapist can uh, teach you the new skills to compensate of any pain or weakness or paralysis you may have experienced as a result of being injured you know and the first few days after traction uh, is performed to be uh, difficult you know and uh, the muscles are often weak since you must spend a lot of time in bed after the traction is performed you know and moving around and walking may be challenging and can uh, make you tired you know and it's important to stick with any rehabilitation program so that you can improve your chances of making complete recovery you know and uh, you know there are the risks involved in all surgical procedures and they may include like uh, adverse reaction to the anesthesia you know and uh, excessive bleeding or uh, infection you know or damage to the surrounding tissues you know or nerve injury or vascular injury you know and it's important to contact your doctor if you have the prescribed medications that are are not relieving your pain and your skin around the like uh, pain site becomes red hot or swollen or infected you know and there is drain drainage you know you know the traction used to uh, be considered a state of the art treatment you know uh, but in recent years other surgical techniques have become more advanced and more effective in correcting the fractures you know and damaging mus like damaged muscles and spinal conditions you know and the traction also does not allow for much movement after surgery so the recovery time is often much longer you know and today it is uh, used primarily as a temporary measure until the definitive procedure is done you know and the traction saved many lives during world war 2 and uh, just by allowing the soldiers to be transported safely without injury to their uh, surrounding tissues you know thank you very much for watching this video if you need more information about any disease any medical condition you can visit our website which is www.diseasesandtreatment.com and please do not forget to subscribe this channel if you need more information thank you goodbye